Good morning. Good morning. As you come on, do us a favor. Go ahead and like and share, like and share for us. Yes, that's what we need you to do this morning. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Wisdom Wednesday and we are ready to get this morning started. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Sherry. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Princess. Yes, it is a happy Wednesday. Good morning to you in Miami. I'm jealous. It's sunny and feeling good down there, I know. Good morning, good morning, Christina. Good morning. So guys, today is Wisdom Wednesday, and I am Dr. K, founder of Freedom by Design. So I'm excited on Wednesdays always. Good morning, Dr. Abigail, because what happens is we get to have a special guest that comes on. So this Wednesday is no different. I'm excited about this beautiful woman of God and what's going on with her. So as you guys go ahead and start sharing, please like and share, like and share, because at Freedom by Design, we're not trying to hold this and keep it to ourselves. We want to share his word with everybody. So what you get on a Wednesday is you get to have an opportunity to eavesdrop in on a conversation with me and a beautiful soul, a beautiful soul. And what happens is we get to talk and we allow God to use us. We don't script our conversations. We just have a real conversation. So this morning, our topic is real obedience, real obedience. And it's so interesting that we started our morning with the God Zone, as we always do Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 a.m., we start as soon as Ruth Ocillian Similian, the co-founder, got on, he instantly started talking about obedience. So I'm like, oh, I text um, our guest speaker and I'm like, confirmation, confirmation. Good morning. Yes, it's obedience. That's what we're supposed to talk about. And as you see over my shoulder here, that obedience brings blessings. Obedience brings blessings. So I won't um, delay any further. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, mom. We're going to go ahead and get started. This beautiful young lady I met um, through um, one of my businesses. Yes, I met, so she's a business partner of mine in addition to being a woman of God and a woman of power, a phenomenal wife, a friend. She is so giving. That's what. That's one of the things that I know about her, which kind of matches her name because she's so giving and she is ultimately, um, she's ultimately a gift. She's a beautiful spirit. And what I want to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to have her unmute herself and come on on. Rutho, drop the um, information for God's own, please. Guys, help me welcome my sister, Gifty Myers. Gifty, are you there? Yes, I am here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, my sister. I was just saying, I'm like, she is a beautiful spirit. She's always giving of herself. So be, your name being gifty, that just, that works out because you are a gift to so many. You give without even thinking about it. And I love that about your spirit. So oh, thank, thank you for you. being on Gifty so much. We love you and we appreciate you for taking the time um, on this morning to just, you know, spend some time with us. How you feeling this morning? Oh my goodness, I feel amazing. I'm, oh, I, look, I had, a, I had a vitamins about a few months ago on our God Zone. You could not, I was like, <laughs> This was back, what, about a few months ago last year. And I was like, what is this girl on? Like, it's early in the morning, 7 o'clock, <laughs> trying to, like, roll over the bed. You know, when you're a self-employed entrepreneur, you work long hours at night. So I can't be up that early. This girl is like, good morning, good morning. I'm like, and she got lip gloss. I try to keep her young. Yes, she got lip gloss this morning. <laughs> Hey, you know, we, we have to, um, we can't get ready. We got to stay ready. It doesn't matter. You know, um, Gifty, before we get into our conversation, because, you know, we'll talk and we'll just go in. For those individuals that are um, a part of the Freedom by Design ministry and movement, and, um, you know, maybe they haven't had an opportunity to be around you, just give, um, give them a little background as to who is this young lady gifty? Cause we hear the accent. We see the beautiful um, colors and the headdress. So tell, who is gifty? Well, gifty is a simple child from God. She was planted mm -hmm. way back before she even knew it. I mean, the name, I'm like, why did my mother give me this name? I mean, school have to answer this question, you know, presents, Christmas, gifty, gifty. I'll take it, you know, just bring it. I am a mother of three beautiful girls, I'm sorry, three beautiful children, two adults and my son. 
Um, and I am originally from West Africa. I just like to say I'm from Africa because Africa is like, I'm all over the place. Absolutely. You know, that's where the heart is. Um, and I am Atlanta. I've been living in Atlanta for what, over almost 30 years, I believe. Ooh. So, you know, I'm like half African, half, half yeah. you know, peach, Georgia that peach. Part, yes. Yes. And entrepreneur, um, I do a little here and there. I'm a consultant. Background is banking. Um, I did banking for half my life. So I have that 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 piece that I'm always trying to expose, but uh, teach someone something, you know, help people out. And it just, you know, I didn't like it being in the closed door. So I just kind of pray about it to get outside to be able to do that, to help people in a way of things that they're not aware of. Okay. You know, so I just kind of took that flow and just, you know, ask God to lead me, you know, and that's what I'm still trying to do. Amen. So Amen. that just match up with our word this morning, this obedient challenge. Obedience. <laughs> hey, right there. Just, hey, so be I'm obedient. I'm still trying. I am still trying. And you're not trying, sis. You are doing it. You are walking the walk. You know, as we were um preparing and when I, I reached out you were like yeah sure and it's like so what are we doing like because you're like I said yes to the dress and I don't even know what the dress looks like so when I say um that this is never scripted um you know it is really never scripted and thank you Ruth though I see you just dropped that information for the God Zone because Gifty and I are a part of the God Zone ministry that's how we start our morning so when people say where y'all getting this energy from what's going on because we jump up at five o'clock at 5 45 to get ourselves ready to prepare ourselves to go before God because the God zone is every morning from six to seven sometimes it goes over but we're so excited about that Gifty I don't think any of us ever mind but you know um as I was thinking Gifty and um listening you know you and I had an opportunity to to break bread together to spend some um you know to spend some quality time together and just recently you um took a trip to Africa and you did that thing on faith. It was a, a walk of obedience and it was in the middle of the pandemic. So I'm listening to you saying, I'm going to Africa. I'm like, in the middle of the pandemic? What, what happened? So what, tell, what happened? How did that happen? Oh my goodness. Um, that was something I felt, you know, it was the end of the year. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, you know, he kept putting this thing in my head that I needed to go. I'm like, go where? I kept getting this thing. I would wake up in the middle of the night and like, mm. just go in the morning. I'm up early and I'm, I was, I was not a morning person. I'm like, where am I going? I'm going to Africa, I'm like, Africa. And then not just any part of Africa, we're talking about Nigeria. Nigeria is like one of the biggest countries in Africa and they're very straight. They're very, you know, Nigerians, you got to love them and then you got to love them. That's all I can say. Absolutely. But I felt like um, when he gave me that message, I was like, it was kind of like telling a little bit of telling Moses to go to Egypt. And Moses is like, you want me to go to Pharaoh and do what? <laughs> you know, so you, you got these people, if they don't like you or you come in there, you, there's no family, you just want to walk up in that space. I'm, I'm originally from Africa, but I'm not Nigerian. I'm, I'm Liberian. So it's a difference, you know? Absolutely. So I can't just be coming up in there, make up the rules and trying to, you know, and do all this extra stuff. Um, you got to be mindful and careful. I'm like, God, like you want me to go to Nigeria. It's, it's pandemic, like, you know, the airport. I haven't got on the plane since this thing. And he said, just go, you know, you're covered. And then as I was on the guys on the catch training, all these different signs, the speaker, you know, like, you know, and then the song keep coming in my head. If I, you know, if you lead me, I would go. You don't ask questions. You just go. Amen. I said, okay, I don't have the money. I mean, where are we getting this money from? You know, business is not moving like it was. Where am I getting this money? He said, just go, mm. just go. Okay. So why am I going, we have a plan. Like, you know, we got a schedule, you know, no, just go. I don't know who I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know. Am I going to the church? Are we linking up with an organization? Just go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would just go. And then when I wake up, I would be led to what I'm supposed to do. And that's exactly how it happened. Wow. I, I you know, he was all over it. Started a little bit. You know, I'm a numbers person. I'm getting a ticket. And guys, a hundred, a ticket that costs about 20 three to 20 
three thousand dollars. Your plane ticket. My plane ticket round trip on Comfort, a hundred and forty-two dollars and fifty-two cents. One forty. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. wait, wait. Hun- Did you just I say used- you got a twenty-three hundred dollar ticket for a hundred? I got a and- Girl. I got a, Let me read. Let me rephrase this. I use my SkyMask card. Normally, when you're using your SkyMask card, it don't allow you to do a certain thing, especially like international trip. Right. It will tell you unavailable or this and this and this because they want you to spend that money. Absolutely. And when you're taking an international trip, usually it has restrictions. And I've tried it in the past before. I couldn't use that. Wow. When I got on, that thing went through all the days and he had the days for me to go. And it was one forty two and fifty two cents that came out of my pocket, mm. which he gave it back to me like so many different ways. Oh, come on now. That's how he started. And then going to the airport, it was so many challenges. I went to the airport three times, y'all. Normally on a trip, I, I already cancel. Like, you know, what is this trip? So when we talk about being obedient, I went to the airport. I went to the airport three times in the same outfit. I said, I'm, they're going to see me in this air. They're going to see me at this airport. Come on then now. The third time I went to the airport, I said, okay, I'm going to bring one of my people with me. Bernadette took me to the airport. I said, now it's two of us. Come on you now. You coming over here. We pray at the people airport. <laughs> we pray when I got to that counter, this man, he asked me for half of the information that I had with me because I have my prayer warrior with me, Lord. And he just, I'm like, dude, really? You got me asking for all these things that I have it with me. And now you just come to put me on this planes, And we just start, we start there and we just looking at each other like, yeah, when he do it. Mm. We're crying at the airport. I'm like, I don't know. I've been, I travel all the time. Why am I, I don't know what it was, but he was just all over this thing. So I mm-hmm. just, I just went, it, it was amazing. Praise God. Praise amazing. God. You know what? He is definitely our provider. And when we are obedient, yes. everything falls in place the way he wants it to, not necessarily the way we want it to. Good morning, Dr. Rocks. Good morning, Frankie. Yes. Um, I see um, Tiff say when Bernadette is in the mix, uh, Bernadette is always in the mix. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. You know what? It's something though about just taking that first step and then he will continue because Gifty is so many people. I know that can, um, hey, Nanette, that can relate to that. You know, you hearing God say move or do something and you like, but that don't make sense right. in this season. It doesn't make sense where I am right now, Lord. How am I going to do it? You know, you've had people who started businesses. It's like, how am I going to start this business? I don't have enough money. I remember one of the businesses I started, I had just paid off a thousand dollar credit card. And I'm like, I got all this credit card debt. I know you don't want me to take my credit card that I just paid off and get in a, do a business. What? And he was like, do it. And I promise you that one little investment paid off all of the credit card debt and some and kept going. So when you move the way you're supposed to, and when you don't try to script that thing out, he will work it out. So I'm so grateful, Gifty, that you were obedient in that. But you know, I saw some of the pictures of, you know, what you did while you were over there and the people that you came in contact. Tell us how, you know, God worked through you when you were there. Because I understand what you're saying about, you know, that's not your native country. That's a whole different situation. Yeah. So it was uh, when I got there, I met up. Um, I had two people who was kind of helping me around. He kind of led me to this lady um, and then this gentleman too who was leading me. So there was like, okay, so we're going to go to this church and we're going to go to this neighborhood. I said, no, no, we're not going to go to a church. I don't want to go to this neighborhood. I just want to be led. They're looking at me like, okay, normally this is how we do it. I'm like, I'm not here for the normal. Oh, girl, come on. I'm just here to just listen. Like these people looking at me thinking like, okay, who is this lady? Does she have money or she's from the United States? You know, I'm like, you know, I am here on a mission. I said, mm-hmm. you know, even, you know, my family got all upset with me. They didn't know where I was going. Cause I, I was there on a mission. I wasn't there to please anybody. I didn't want to know about what someone thought. I just wanted to be obedient. I would get on the little little bike we go in these little towns little villages i'm not staying in a hotel now now i'm on the middle it's it's hot out there i'm sweaty you know in the streets um and i'm just 
I'm led by something. I would see, a, you know, a lady or kids out in the streets, and I would just go up. I have the duffel bag with the stuff in it. You know, I got some school supplies from Ruto. Um, there's school supplies, there's clothing, things for women and children. Amen. And you see these kids walking in the streets. They don't even have shoes on. You see these little boys walking a long distance just to go play soccer. They wake up early in the morning. These kids are up early, and they're just, they're just happy and peaceful. And I'm like, oh, my God, now I understand why you send me over here. So it's not even about the gift or the things that I'm doing. It's it's about what they had that I needed as well. You know, um, I'm you know I'm just like okay, you know, because you got to be respectful. So I'm talking to them, you know, and they're just oh, the auntie, auntie, they're so respectful, you know, and they're standing there, and I'm like, uh, what's your shoes? That's like, oh, I don't have a shoe. So I'm like, oh wow, and then I have little uh, flip flops in the bags and things, and these are things that I've been getting over the year. Right. You know, I just, when I go in the store, I see these things on sale. I just pick it up. I'm not going doors to doors. I'm just being obedient when I'm like, okay, why am I buying this? I don't have a five-year-old. My baby is like almost 13 year old. <laughs> why am I buying this for this? This is not my size, but I'm just like, okay, just pick it up. I just pick up stuff. I come home. I'm like, did I just buy this? Stuff? Okay, whatever. Put it in the bag. Amen. This is not for me. I don't need to know who this thing is going to. I don't need you to tell me, you know, or think, no, I, I'm just trying to listen to that voice. You know, and giving it to these kids, they're walking around. They're so happy, you know, like they have pencil and sharpener and they're just, just so uh, the small, like, the little things, the little, little things, things, little you know? things, Ooh, that, the little things, something I see the comments in the chat just went off when you said, I'm not here for the normal. I'm not here for Whatever, I'm not here for the same reason and purpose that everybody else is. I don't want to go to the physical body of the church. You wanted to go out and meet the people. You were doing what God called you to do. And once you got out there, you were able to see it. I saw uh, my mom says, I'm here for the I am. I'm like, you better say it. But you know what? Um, get the people who are hearing you um, as you're talking, because I hear you say, you know what? I'm going in stores. I'm buying stuff. You had no idea. Of course, he knew. He already knew about the end. He knew what was planned well in advance. But what people don't know about you is that you're actually a very reserved and shy person. So this was way at your element. <laughs> yes, I am. I mean, I'm always in the back. I don't need anybody to know what I'm doing. I keep I'm on my own business. I'm my kids like, mom, what's your friends? I'm like, what friends? You know, I don't do friends. I don't know how to do friends. I'm like, you're my friends. You know, um, I just, you know, anything's happening. I'm like sitting in the back. I'm the one who just observing everyone. I'm taking notes. I'm eating it up. You know, I'm just quiet people like oh she's shy she can't talk but i think he's been pulling me into the place where nah you don't belong back there they need to know i i need you up here i'm like where i need you up here i'm like uh you you, you know i don't do all that speech thing right like i don't talk you know i mean first of all we have this accent and people are going to be like okay where she's from and all this and all that you know um he's like i need you to be up here I'm like, okay. And then, you know, he will wake you up and tell you what it is that you need, he needs you to do. Um, I'm a, I'm a go getter when it comes to something I want to do, I go and do it. So he put that stuff in me. So when he's talking to me and then I'm telling him what it is I cannot do, Amen. or I'm not this, he said, so you made yourself. Oh girl. Come so, on now. Come and on now. I'm like, okay, put me there. You know, if you want me to stand over there and do this, I'm just, I'm, you know, just going to do what you asked me to do. Amen. You know, yeah. Gifty, that right there was a whole word for somebody because there are so many of us who are, and he, he has, everybody has a place, a role to play. Some of us, he has called to stand in the background. Some of us, he's called to sit and I'll um, use the analogy of a, a football stadium. Some people are up in what we call up in the nosebleed section. Some people are right here on the 50 yard line. They can see it. They, you know, they're, they can, they, they're able to reach out and touch it. Some people are on the sideline with the pass. They're right there. And some people are going to be players. We got some people who are going to be the coaches. We got some people who are going to be the referees. We all have a role to play. Just because in this season, you might be in the nosebleed 
nosebleed doesn't mean in the next season he's not going to push you out of your comfort zone Mm -hmm. and put you dead smack in the middle of the field where the action is doesn't mean he's not going to put a microphone in your hand and doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional microphone it means it's time for you to open your mouth and speak it means that we won't be able to think about what it looks like we won't be able to think about what it feels like it means that he's pushing us out of our comfort zone to do what to expose us and it's like wait a minute um, I'm not ready and he's like it's not about you being ready I got somebody I have some families in Nigeria that are waiting on you you're the gift that I have prepared for them you're the blessing that I have been preparing for them so they're waiting on you you don't know who they are but they're waiting on gifty to come on in just like you were a blessing to the people who were they were showing you around they're thinking they're doing you a favor you're the bless you were the blessing for them you were giving them something they didn't even realize it so you know that that right there just hit me different because i'm like everybody in different seasons you got a different role to play so while you're like yeah i'm okay with being in the back nobody needs to know what i'm doing and god was like yes they do right now i need to i need to push you to the front so i say that so people don't get comfortable where you are because when he gets ready to use you you're going to be super uncomfortable it's gone so in that season of being able to sit back i hope that you're studying i hope that you're meditating on that word so that you'll be ready so when he's ready to use you nobody can't distract you nobody can't tell you nothing different you won't um be like well i don't i'm not i'm not confident i'm not understanding you know just like you said are either we gonna trust god or we gonna try to trust ourselves because we can't tell him how to do anything he knows how to do it best and for us we just gotta walk put that take that first step and he will align everything else that we need so my sister that thing right there was a whole word for me i'm like lord she can't stay on the sideline she can't be in the back no more and that's why we talked i know in the god zone about this year and i know i see ruto on you know what in this season there are going to be some different voices that are going to emerge that are going to you know rise to the top and there are going to be some that have to now step back because it's a we we have been called for an appointed time to to do an appointed work and we got to be obedient with that gifty that thing girl spoke to me in a whole different way i can just see those babies and all those people just so excited to see you so you know blessed by things we take for granted a pair of flip-flops in our mind is like okay it's just some flip-flops but it hits different when it's like you know what i mean somebody is so excited for the things that we can go to the store and get feminine hygiene product uh, like you said a pencil sharpener that that was different how did your trip end up culminating uh it is it's, it's crazy how i think it was like um oh my goodness <laughs> y'all will not believe this but when he kept talk, I'm gonna back it up just a tad bit. When he kept talking to me about this thing, I wasn't trying to listen in the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. And then when every time I tried to to do something as far as work, it won't work. Mm. I, my whole mind, I'm like, what is going on? It's like I, I know this stuff. I'm talking to customer people. Nobody's trying to do anything, you know. Um, the connect business, the, the I sell artwork, I sell African clothes. I, you know, I'm a consultant as well, small business consultant. I'm like, what is going on? Why my mind is so, it's, it's, it's not clear. And I kept sitting and I just like, you know, going back into my flesh and I'm like, Gifty, you are the best. You, you know how, your work. I mean, this is what you did your whole life. You help people. Why are things not going on? Because I needed to drop everything Mm -hmm. and do this thing, right? That trip thing happened, um, like in two, I think I want to say maybe less than two weeks. Wow. Less than two weeks. To Africa? (laughs) To Africa. Everything happened when he kept, you know, because I kept putting it to the side, you know, you ignore it like, nah, you know, he's stripping, you know, it's not until it starts to get like happening every day in your head. And you can't sleep. You're waking up in the middle of the night or three o'clock in the morning and then two o'clock in the morning. And then he wake up four o'clock in the morning on the hour to hour. You just twisting and turning. You can't sleep. I'm like, what's going on? 
I'm not depressed. My kids are okay. Things are going, you know, yada, yada, yada. What is the problem? I thank God for a home. I'm in my home. Everything is, you know, okay. Why am I not moving? Why am I stuck? Mm -hmm. And when he shook me, it was in a very short time. I'm saying two weeks, but I want to say maybe less than two weeks. So now you have the the COVID test and all this extra stuff. So that thing took place in a very short time. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm looking at the time. Um, My -hmm. visa expired. My visa to the country <laughs> expired. I had to do everything to, to go to the airport. And I told the people, you know, I'm thinking this thing is right the 31st or whatever. I'm at the airport and this thing was expired on the 17th. It, it was just, I was just laughing. I'm like, who travels, pack a bag. Then look at the passport. First of all, your visa, you know, you're not citizen of this country. And, you know, he said, go. You know, somebody at the airport came you know, saying, hey, give the, uh, excuse me, ma'am, I'm not trying to interrupt, but you can still call the council um, immigration there, whatever, whatever, talk to them and tell them whatever you need, email them. Once you get that, you can pay the fee and you can get on the plane. A complete stranger, I don't even know, told me that. I said, okay. The lady is looking at the thing. She's like, you are at the airport. You didn't check your visa. And that is not even like me, you know? So um, all that stuff happened within less than two weeks. Wow. Okay, less than two weeks. Um, I don't even know. I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know what your question was, but it just took me. No, there. no, no, like, no, no. Everything no. happened like within two weeks. And I'm over there, you know, and like I said, those people are very, they're looking at you like, okay, so you're, you think you're American citizen. You're going to come over here and try to do things. Normally they give you a hard time. I'm just chilling. I'm sitting because I know why I'm there. You know, so the, kid, the guy <laughs> asked me one of the questions. He was like, so why are you visiting Nigeria? I said, I'm here to serve. Oh, come he on said, now. He took the thing. I said, I'm here to serve. He took the thing. He stamped the thing. He said, here, go. Just like that. Everything just wow. went just like that. No bribing. Normally in Nigeria, as you go there, you got to give all this money. You got to do all this extra stuff. They will open your luggages to check all this thing. I have things for people, like new stuff in there. So I don't need anybody to be in that stuff. I walked to the get the last get the lady was like, we need to look in your bag. I said, look, I'm on this flight tired and everything. I said, lady, I'm here for the kids. Amen. I'm here for the kids. I'm not here for anything else. This is not a vacation. This is not a beach thing. This is not a, you know, I love the beach. This is not, you know, this and this about me. I'm here for the kids. She said, madam, have a good trip. Woo, come on now. Come on now. Wow. So. That's it. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just, yeah, those kids, you know, those kids are just, oh my gosh. They're so, and I, I think I saw this thing a oh, long time ago. I saw myself in a space, just sitting on the floor with these kids, you know, talking to them about the word of God, you know, and I'm like talking to these kids about the word of God. I'm, I just started learning the, the book myself. The only thing I knew was Matthew, uh, something about the book of Matthew. I always loved Matthew and then first and second Corinthians, you know, I don't even know where all these things are in the Bible. Now, of a sudden, you want me to be teaching kids about the Bible? So it looked like they're going to be teaching me because those kids are on point, you know. But I saw this thing, you know, that vision. I saw this thing years back. I mean, I really didn't pay attention until now I see it happening. And I even wrote this thing in my journal mm. about what's actually happening. That mm. vision board is something that you write, mm. you know. I wrote this thing years back. And I saw myself in it, and now it's actually happening. I'm like, okay, so that's why I have my kids. The time I have my kids, that's why my kids are older now. They're out of the way kind of thing to put me out there to help some more other kids. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Girl, I'm sitting no. Girl, you know, when we, it's interesting um, that we're at the top of the hour and you talk about vision boards and writing things down. And, you know, we do the annual vision board event every year. And, you know, some people think, okay, I'm going to do it. And it's going to come all to fruition this year. I've had it happen for me where 90%, 95% of something of my vision board came to pass within a year. But then I've also had things that I put on a vision board 10 years ago that are just coming to pass Mm. now because it's not about what we want. And when we do these vision boards, we're supposed to do, we're emptying ourselves out and asking God to show us 
the direction he wants us to go. And then we can put those things on the board. It doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. Of course, we are living in the prison of expectancy. We're expecting all these great things to happen. We're expecting for him to use us, you know, and all of that great stuff, but it's going to happen in his time. So your time, well, your time is now. This is your time to do what he has called you to do, what he's been preparing you to do. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I get to be able to witness it. I'm grateful that, you know, you would think enough of me to um, reach out to me because you do. You are truly a gift gifty. You send me messages. You send, you know, reminders about things. And sometimes it's just, hey, I was thinking about you or I did this, I did that. You never, I never see you or hear you complain about anything. So I'm so grateful. And I know that you're studying the word, but the beauty of it is he didn't, he, he doesn't want us to learn the Bible front to back and then come to him. He already knows we don't know it. We don't know it all. He already knows that we're gonna fall short. And that's, that's the whole purpose for us to remember we need him for him to constantly keep in front of us that we can't do it by ourselves. It's all about him. So I'm super excited this morning and I'm so grateful we are at the top of the hour. Is there anything that you want to um, leave us with? How can people follow you on um, Facebook? On Facebook, I know it's Gifty Myers and I tagged you. How can they follow you on um, you know Instagram or other social media platforms? Um, on Instagram, I'm there as... Um... GCMC215. Um, I think it's GCMC. I will put it in the post. GCMC215. And um, I also have an online store, African stuff. You know, when I go over there, I have to share. Like I tell people, look, you don't have to spend the $2,300 or the $3,000 to get African things. Um, once I see those things, I'm like, oh my gosh, other people got to see this. They got to wear these earrings. They got to wear this top. They got to do this, you know. So I don't just keep it to myself. I bring it back and try to share it with as many people as I can so they can know the real culture that -hmm. they're interested in, you know, not the, you know, the counterfeits, you know, but the real deal. (laughs) Um, So I would put that um, on that as well. And one thing I just wanted to say to people was people are going through so many different things. Um, And this is something for myself because, you know, um, just be kind to each other. Amen. Just be kind to each other. You don't know what someone is facing. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the problems they have in their homes. You don't know the abuse they're receiving from anyone. You don't know that. You don't know that path. You don't know that journey. Just be nice. Being nice to someone doesn't take anything from you. It doesn't take anything from you. Just speak to someone. Smile. You don't have to know a person to speak to that person. Amen. You know, and that's the only thing I would leave out, you know, just be kind to each other. We shouldn't just know these words, you know, you know how some people know the Bible front to back, but they don't even take, if they would take, I wouldn't even say 10%, that's, that's a huge number. If they would just take a tiny bit of that thing and just try to embrace that or try to meditate on that or try to eat that thing, if we all was just doing that, it will make a, this world a whole much better place. Like just, just a little. We're not perfect. We're going to come out there with all this extra stuff. But just be nice to someone. Amen. Gifty, thank you so much. Hearing that is like, you know, y'all got to have, we got to have faith. Like all he has is the grain of a mustard seed and we can move a whole mountain just yeah. a little bit. So being kind and, you know, all, it, it costs us, as Gifty said, nothing. I am so grateful, sis, that you came on. And I know this will not be the last time. So I'm excited about that. So family, um, Gifty is going to go back. She's going to drop her um, Instagram contact information as well as the information for her store so that we can support her. Make sure you let us know where we can also um, get in contact as far as the art as well, Gifty. So um, we're excited, family. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And if you're listening to this later, please remember to share with somebody else because Gifty's testimony on this morning is definitely a blessing to all of us just being able to be obedient because in our obedience, the blessings are going to come. In our obedience, we're going to help somebody. It does, it's not about us. It's never about us. You know, whatever we're going, it's not about us. He's preparing us to be a blessing to someone else. So we love you. God bless you. 
Thank and you. Have- and I just want to put one last thing. I didn't have my Expose shirt on, but I have my Expose book, y'all. I'm <laughs> just going to get your copies on Amazon. <laughs> Or you can look at her link as well. So I just, you know, we got to be girly, you know. I didn't have the Expose t-shirt, but I got my book here. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you can get free to your um, Exposed book on Amazon. Um, or you can uh, purchase it at freedombydesigns1.com. So we love you guys. Yes, we will definitely be hearing from Gifty again. I see a... Um, it's been stirring in my spirit. I actually see several of us on um you know in the morning at one time doing something a little different so i'm excited about what's to come i know my sister will be all in because she said yes to the dress she's like okay like what did i just say yes to but we love y'all have a blessed day um take care thank you again gifty bye-bye everyone